Hi, good morning everyone. Um, it's actually a good night for me, so apologies if I'm not very energetic because I flew in from London yesterday. Um, I am very happy to be here, uh, especially CHK is my uh, alma mater. Uh, so I graduated uh, 2013 from um, a Bachelor in Business Administration uh, at Global Business Studies. So very happy to come back and to also see how we're taking social entrepreneurship further and beyond and linking that to the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, so I'm going to spend some time just to really speak to the young people here um, about how you can dream big and start young. Uh, I really started my journey five years ago here in Hong Kong in 2013 and I was just finishing my undergraduate degree and I never thought and I, my family still doesn't really understand the notion of entrepreneurship um, and knowing my family was an entrepreneur but I was given so much encouragement from the school and I think there's no better time than now to really do something differently. So I'll share the story of uh, Lensational, uh, the social enterprise that I started uh, here in Hong Kong. Uh, but before I go into that, I just want to touch upon a bit about the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, in my time, and I sound old saying this, but in my time it was the Millennium Development Goals. And I actually attended uh, the World um, Model United Nations Conference in Australia in March 2013, where um, our committee was debating what comes next after the Millennium Development Goals. Uh, and we then presented the findings to UNSCAP, and it was great being part of that. Um, and the difference now is that the global community, including the business community, are really behind this agenda of by 2030. So this picture you see here, and I don't know if you could see me, um, I am here um, for Sustainable Development Goal 5. Um, that's the uh, one that I'm very focused on in my work, uh, on driving gender equality. But this is a calendar. Um, that Lavazza, the coffee company um, based in Italy, they actually created. They realized that as a company, they have the resources and they also have um, the convening power um, and the artistic kind of acumen. And they decided to create this calendar where they invited a model for each sustainable development goal. And the slogan of the campaign is 2030, what are you doing? To really get people to think, I mean now, 2018, in, by, in 12 years' time, what would we be doing and would we feel proud looking back at ourselves today that we have done all that we could to make the world a better place. And while each um, goal represents different things, it's also important to highlight having all these people come together, how the different goals actually relate to each other. And for me, for example, um, SDG 5 is a core um, SDG that I'm focused on, but there's actually a lot of synergies between SDG 5 and, for example, SDG 13, which is around climate action. Uh, the World Economic Forum has created studies um, and other academics as well, where they look at how get, getting girls to school actually would help with family planning and then help with reducing carbon emissions. So it's thinking about all these links and as you develop your business or as you help other solutions, think about how the SDGs come together and how you could also use these SDGs to help frame the way you talk about your impact. Um, and I was very happy to be part of this and I also now just try to use this wherever I go um, to get people to think about it differently. And then if you go onto the website, if you search Lavasa uh, 2030, uh, you'll also see the story where I tell uh, about why I started Lensational. Um, and, um, and here is me, uh, five years ago, I just graduated from the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and I had the idea of using photography um, to help marginalized women and girls to tell their story. Um, and you can see here from this photograph that was taken in Pakistan um, in, um, in August when I was teaching, using this concept, and I was teaching um, young girls uh, in schools how they could use, the, here is disposable camera as a pilot because we didn't have anything else. Uh, but how she could actually use 
photography to tell her story. And why I felt so passionate about photography especially is that um, my grandmother, who is um, uh, illiterate, actually she found a lot of power in photography as a universal language that transcends culture and language barriers. And so I took this idea, and I think whenever I see this photo, it's the curiosity and creativity that I could see from her eyes, and how that was a moment when she was able to see the world differently. And so um, the sensational idea you could see, um, the first starting point was really um, when I created uh, the Facebook page on International Women's Day 2013. And I, before that, I was creating the business plan. I went through the Hong Kong Social Enterprise Challenge, which was a great experience. Uh, but things never go as you plan, and we, we didn't get um, uh, the funding that we needed. And I was actually quite disappointed with myself. Uh, but then I um, decided to just start the Facebook page on that day. And so this is also to encourage you, your journey will never be linear. Um, you might go somewhere and then you, you might get the response you want or maybe not. But as long as you keep going and you try different ways of uh, piloting your idea and keep going. And um, I, yeah, a, a few days after um, joining the finals of the Hong Kong Social Enterprise Challenge, I decided to start a Facebook page and that was really the beginning um, of, of our journey. And Lensational as a social enterprise, uh, we have the focus of empowering women through photography for them to achieve emotional and economic empowerment. I'll get to talk a bit about our social enterprise model. Hopefully that will serve inspiration in helping you to think how you might be able to generate income uh, through your, your intervention. Um, so that's emotional and economic empowerment, but very importantly, it's also advocacy. So how can we use these photographs and their stories? And rather than us kind of advocating on behalf, we just provide a platform for these stories and photographs to be showcased so that our women are telling about how they want to see global development um, from their very own perspectives. Um, and how how I kind of managed to think about this model of social enterprise, um, and I agree with um, previous speakers about really the potential of leveraging this business solution and help um, any social interventions to become more sustainable. Um, so this is just a graph, uh, because I'm also a consultant on social impact, that I use this a lot. Uh, in the past, we always think about charities on the kind of far uh, left on your side, and on the far right of your side is commercial enterprises, and we often think about them as separate and in silos. Uh, charities being just to maximize social impact, uh, businesses being there just to maximize profits. Uh, but in the past 10 years, uh, there's been this new thinking of blended return, and that we can actually blend financial return and social returns. And that also means there's a Pro proliferation of um, legal entities that kind of fulfill both social returns and financial returns at the same time. And you can see uh, on the left hand side, some charities become more enterprising. How can they have a trading arm where they start generating revenue, but their primary goal is still to create maximum social returns? All the way to social enterprises that have both in tandem uh, to social purpose businesses uh, like. Uh, there's a movement called B Corporations. Uh, you can have a certification uh, to demonstrate that you generate positive social and environmental return. But all the way to companies like City uh, being socially responsible, giving their profits back to charity. Uh, and of course, we still have purely commercial enterprises. But as the world continues and as we embark on achieving the goals by 2030, what we'll most likely see is the um, increase of enterprises really in the middle, where actually social returns and financial returns shouldn't be compromising each other. And because of uh, the need to um, generate sustainable enterprises and for uh, an intervention like Lensatio to achieve as much scale as quickly as possible, I really saw the potential in social enterprises. And so therefore, just to give kind of this concept a bit of uh, light, 
Uh, we start with photography workshops. If you think of our photography workshops, any, we, we behave like any charity. We focus on our uh, beneficiaries, so that's our, the marginalised women and girls. We provide them training on photography and digital storytelling. We have a training which is eight hours, uh, and we kind of really touch upon emotional empowerment. But then actually, what do we do with those photographs? A charity is, uh, could have stopped there. And, you know, Lensatio could have functioned well, just doing photography workshops, getting donors, um, individuals or foundations to donate money to us and just do that. But we saw a lot of potential in actually utilizing those photographs and to achieve um, business opportunity. Uh, and by that, we thought of what are the ways we could sell the photographs. Um, and the next slide, you, I'll talk a bit about the business opportunity that I found at that time. But as a business model, ha after the photography workshops, the photographs, then we distribute them through our partner Getty Images. Um, we also do exhibitions and we have our online platform. And 50% of the revenue, uh, not profits, the revenue goes back directly to the women. So that you know, if, if you go on our website now to buy a photograph, uh, which might cost um, 500 Hong Kong dollars, then 50% of that goes directly to, say, a poor woman in Pakistan, and that will mean a lot for her livelihoods. And then 50% goes back to Lensational, we're structured as a non-profit, um, in the sense that all the profits go back to the social cause and not to the shareholders. Um, we also then uh, ensure that we have ongoing training and support to our women. Um, so you can see just a list of um, things that we go on to support them with. Um, and we have now examples of women who are actually making money um, on an ongoing basis as event photographers in their local community. But at that time, when I was thinking about how can we really make money off this, of course, individuals could buy it out of sympathy, but there's got to be a more uh, deeply embedded business case. Uh, and when I was Googling, um, stock photography, changes in photography industry, I found, I stumbled upon this uh, huge opportunity, um, stock photography. So when, when we go out and we see billboards, the photographs are, you have to buy those photographs, you can't just take it uh, off someone's website. Uh, so this stock photography is the business of buying the copyright of images for editorial and commercial use. It's actually a $3 billion industry uh, globally. Uh, but only around 6% of images, stock photos, actually originate from Asia. Um, stock photography, the things you see online, are still predominantly from Europe and North America. And just a very simple fact, as emerging markets economies grow, of course, uh, companies will need images from those markets, but there's not the supply of that. Uh, ju just to give you a bit of example, if you go on Getty Images and you s search, imagine your company selling products to families. You might want uh, a picture of family enjoying their life outdoors. So you can see on Getty Images, there's half a million photos just on family life outdoors. So in a way, it's a very crowded market. But then if you just add um, Pakistan to, what, to your search, then it narrows down to only 35 images. Imagine if you're a company wanting to sell these products, uh, say a barbecue um, stove to Pakistan, and you need something for your advertising campaign, you, can on, you only have 35 images to choose from from a half a million. But then the images are also very stereotypical. Why do we have families enjoying themselves, boys swimming, and then if you are Pakistan, then you have, you can't even see the woman's face. And that's just not reality, and that's just us trying to break the stereotype and really bring authentic images from those markets so that companies can be using them. Uh, and we've been quite successful at that. Um, I, just want to tell you a bit about kind of the journey and again reinforcing uh, the point that um, your journey would not be linear. I had the idea of you know, selling stock photos back in 2013, but it's not, the, the business case is still there, but it's not such an easy journey either. So uh, 2013, we started the first Facebook page. I showed some images from where I was uh, in Pakistan, uh, piloting it. 
I then I had the opportunity to move to London to do my master's degree and managed to bring Lensational further uh, to, to the UK and we started really expanding globally. Um, and in 2014, a really important aspect, and that's something to consider as well when you're still in university, um, I managed to publish a research report at the Graduate Institute of Geneva. Uh, we were able to get academics to actually help us reinforce our evidence base. Why can photography empower women? And we had gender ex experts, we had communications experts who gave us support on building that evidence base. So that's something to consider because you're sitting on so much academic expertise here in CUHK or in other universities and that could really help you uh, in evidencing your social impact. And in 2014, I also launched our crowdfunding campaign. I mean, crowdfunding is a great way uh, to start um, getting some funding. Uh, of course, if you're joining the competition, there's a way uh, for you to get funds immediately. But if you, um, but crowdfunding is just another way of thinking about how you can source funds from a wider range of individuals. And in 2014, that was also when I started thinking about the team and thinking about who else could I bring on to really help me take this forward. Uh, I will have more lessons to share on that because the team is so important. And probably, of course, in, in the first year when you start, you need a founding team. But as you grow, how can you bring more people with you and really uh, move this on as a, um, as a growing organization? Um, in 2015, um, we had an article on The Guardian, um, a leading UK publication. Uh, media coverage is also a really important way. It's a free advertising, basically. And Lensational, we've never spent, um, in the first three years, we've never spent a dollar on advertising and marketing. Uh, and that's great because, you know, if you're a traditional enterprise, you probably need to spend at least uh, 10, 20 percent of your budget on marketing. But as a social enterprise, your social impact is so compelling that a lot of press uh, would love to have that as uh, good news stories to share and to inspire people. So think, of, think about that. And the Guardian article was really instrumental because uh, I remember it, it got published um, on the 3rd of January 2015, uh, just a few days after the new year started. And then we got bombarded by emails from people across different countries. And I think from December 2014 to um, January 2015, we had an increase of uh, new 10 countries, uh, volunteers from uh, 10 extra countries that reach out to us and want to bring this to their respective locations. And from then on, it kind of really just, uh, one thing led to another. Um, and of course, it's great to highlight these milestones. I hope to give you a bit of sense how uh, various components that I saw was really crucial in our journey. Uh, but of course, the most important thing is um, that it was never easy and you really have to take things one step at a time. Uh, you have that ultimate vision, uh, of course, in your head. But one day and, another, and the next day, you have to do things on a very, very small basis. Uh, but never um, give up is the kind of most important lesson from this journey. Uh, I will talk about building a team uh, because, of course, I'm the face of Lensational, but I wouldn't be able to do anything without my team. Uh, we have a board of trustees and advisors. Um, depending on how you structure your, your enterprise, whether it's a for-profit or non-profit, you will have different kind of structure. But as a non-profit, we are obliged to have a board of trustees uh, who uh, kind of look after our, our um, compliance issues. Uh, but we also have a board of advisors who are really experienced individuals, like what Angel said earlier, uh, mentors or people who have you know, done 20, 30 years in their career who could have different perspectives to add to the enterprise. Um, and then you have to think about your teams, how you structure that. Um, as a social enterprise, what's interesting is that you probably will have people who come from very different backgrounds in your team. We have a programs team, uh, that, and that programs team you could probably find in any nonprofits. Uh, as a global organization, uh, we are now in 23 countries where we have programs. So we have a global programs team that looks after uh, all the programs in the various countries, and each country will have a country programs team. 
Uh, we also have our research team because it's really important to know that we are doing the right thing. So we shouldn't keep doing what we do if we're actually causing harm or not having any impact. So our research team uh, is actually led by a, um, by a lady who's done a PhD in development economics who gives us that kind of rigor, academic rigor in what we do. Uh, you can find really the programs team in any nonprofit. But what is interesting about us is we have business development um, who are looking at how we sell the photographs, how we drive more corporate partnerships. And in between, uh, marketing, communications, and operations are really the backbone of our organization, uh, especially operations, because as a small organization, how do we actually op optimize our processes? And you can see from just the job roles that we have people from very different backgrounds. I often find myself having a discussion with a lawyer and a photographer who normally don't talk to each other, but they need to talk to each other so that we have the different kinds of expertise. Uh, because social enterprises, you're really bringing people from different backgrounds to work together towards a social mission. So building a team is extremely important. Happy to share more. You can look at our website uh, where we publish our, the job um, description for all the roles that we recruit for. Uh, having clarity in what you expect from people who are helping you um, either as a volunteer or as a staff member is really important and hopefully that you could, uh, I could share some lessons just based on what we have done. And, and really because of the team, I was able to grow it. Um, and then Seisho had has a very interesting model and I didn't actually intend to build it that way, but just because of the reaction that we got from different people across the world, we managed to grow through volunteers um, into, now we have programs in 23 countries, uh, mainly in Asia and Africa. The colors in orange are where we have programs where we train women. Um, and in other colors, the yellow ones are the ones where we have additional volunteers who might be working remotely for us uh, in the business development team or in marketing. Um, in red is where we do majority of our business development. Uh, not surprisingly, those are mainly in developed countries where a lot of the multinational companies are incorporated and they might be interested in buying our photographs and we also collect cameras from individuals, uh, those who no longer want to use their cameras and want to give it away uh, for our programs. And I was very happy to share um, our story through a TEDx talk as well and I think it's um, just another, well, another slide to show you kind of the importance of storytelling. Uh, of course, Nancy is a storytelling organization, um, so that might be more natural to us, but whatever you do, um, you know, the ability to really convey why you're doing it and to capture the audience who will then go on to support you in different ways. Um, and so when I started, and hopefully these achievements are for you to also think about that this is possible for you. Um, I never intend to you know, go on the Forbes under 30 list, and really that's not my motivation. But it's important, of course, to have international recognition and to think about your impact metrics. What do you think success would look like for your organization and start capturing those? Um, what I think is really unique about us, and hopefully more enterprises will utilize that power is corporate partnerships. We have a very good partnership with Getty Images, uh, the world's largest stock photo agency, but also with uh, Standard Chartered Bank, a bank that focuses a lot on emerging markets, and we sell the photographs taken by the women uh, to the bank so that the bank uses that in their annual report. So these are just examples of how we utilize the power corporates in uh, spreading our mission, and of course in getting the financial resources we need to achieve our work. Um, and to come to an end of my presentation, um, the journey of, I started this um, presentation really trying to help you think about how you can dream big and start young. Uh, starting young, I think, is really difficult, uh, especially in a place like Hong Kong. Um, I'm born and raised in Hong Kong, and um, as I mentioned earlier, I still have some family members who think I should get a, a job probably in a bank like City. Um, <laughs> but it's, you know, that, you shouldn't let those bring you down. Um, and I think starting young, we are probably very unique as young people that we are more passionate because we haven't been uh, perhaps disappointed with the realities of life yet. 
uh, but passion is so important. Uh, and I, I really reinforce, my passion was reinforced when I go onto fields and when I uh, interact with even younger uh, people, like these uh, four girls I met in Mutan uh, in Pakistan. Uh, they were from very underprivileged uh, communities and the school leadership college gave them a scholarship to pursue their education. In a place like Pakistan, it's not just uh, income, uh, the low income that um, prohibits people from going to schools. It's also because of their gender that society expects them just to be married or that girls should not deserve education. There are these pervasive social norms that are holding them back. But they, are, they, they got into school and they are fighting so hard just to stay in school. And I get so much inspiration from people like them. And I also think about my family, how, how lucky I am, but that my mother had to fight for her education. My grandmother came to Hong Kong with nothing as a refugee. You know, these are stories that I think really help us ground the work that we do. And so passion, and of course perseverance. If, they, if girls like them had to fight for every single day on their way to school, not to be harassed, just to be able to go to school safely, you know, if we have so many resources at our disposal, how can we really persevere and create the opportunities for women and girls or any other groups that have to fight so much harder just to get to where we are? So for me, passion and perseverance are really the most important ingredients in life and, of course, in your enterprise. So I'll leave you with this quote um, that I, I've got from actually my... Uh, the lady that I worked for in Pakistan when I was starting in my journey. Um, Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, dedicated people can change the world. And indeed, that's the world, that's the only thing that the world ever has. So I leave you with this picture in how this brave young woman was able to really change how she thinks the role of women and girls could be. And I encourage you and I really um, Hope you could also think about what the world that is that you want to see by 2030 and what your role could be in making that happen. Thank you.